I recently purchased OnePlus 13 from China and it came with Chinese colorways. If you're curious about my opinions about this device or the software in general, you can watch my in-depth review from the link up here. But the short version is, in order for me to use this device in here, Europe, I had to make some tweakings. As you may already know, Chinese firmware devices are not particularly designed to be used globally. Therefore, sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking and adjustment to utilize your phone fully. Don't let this discourage you though. I created this amazing video just for you. Just follow these steps and you won't even realize that you are using a Chinese firmware device. For this demonstration, I will be using my OnePlus 13 with ColorOS, but most of the things are applicable to other devices with Chinese firmware as well. And finally, if you're only curious about one specific topic, you can find the chapters down in the video, so you can skip directly to that. And without further ado, let's get started. The absolute first thing that you need to do when you get your device is obviously installing or enabling Google Play services so that you can use Google services and Google Play Store. Depending on where you purchase your phone or the manufacturer, GSM might be enabled already. For example, OnePlus 13 came it enabled. Therefore, it is extremely easy to do in ColorOS. First, go to the settings page, then system and update, and Google settings. Then simply enable Google mobile services and that's it. From here, you can also visit your Google settings by pressing Google menu. Finally, if Google Play Store is not installed on your device, you need to install it by yourself. But first, for this, we need to install an app that will help us install bundled APKs. I personally use APK Mirror Installer, but if you know any other applications, please be my guest. Scroll down and find the latest version in all versions section. Since currently we don't have a way to install bundled APKs, you need to download the single APK version rather than the bundle. After the download is complete, open the APK. Most probably, you will be greeted with a pop-up asking for you to allow your browser to install apps. Check Don't Remind Me Again and press Allow. Then the app should install normally. And don't worry, this pop-up is just there to scare you. Your browser cannot install applications without asking you or getting your permission in the background. The next step is downloading and installing the latest Google Play Store APK. You can also get the latest APK from APK Mirror. Again, scroll down to find the latest version and open it. Google Play Store has a lot more options to choose from, but don't get overwhelmed. Just download the ARM64 V8A version. This is for 64-bit ARM processors. If your phone is not older than 6 years, this is what your device is using. Open the bundle after installing. This time it should open the APK Mirror installer. Again, you may need to allow for side loading. APK Mirror Installer automatically chooses the correct version for your device and installs it. Therefore, all you have to do is press install. And that's it. Now you have a Google Play Store in your phone. And of course, it will be updated automatically, so you don't need to download and install the APK again. From now on, it will be a lot more easier since we can simply use Google Play Store to install necessary applications. And the first app that I usually install is Gboard. If you're happy with your inbuilt keyboard, be my guest and skip this section. Just install the Gboard from your Play Store, then go to your settings, system and update, keyboard and input methods, and current keyboard. Choose Gboard and you're all set. All of your passwords, dictionaries, and other safe settings should simply carry over from your Google account. Another setting I suggest you to disable is the secure keyboard. In the same page, find a toggle saying secure keyboard for passwords and disable it if it is enabled. What this does is whenever you are entering a password, it switches to the system keyboard so that third-party keyboard apps can't read your passwords. However, since it doesn't support any kind of autofill, it's a bit annoying for my taste. If that's not a problem for you, you are free to keep it enabled for additional security. Another Google app that I instantly install is Google Wallet. Again, you can use Google Play Store to install Google Wallet. To make it your default payment app, go to Settings, AI, Easy Pay, and disable it. Then go to Settings, Connection and Sharing, NFC, and make sure that NFC is enabled. And finally, from the same page, you can choose a default payment app, which we will set to Google Wallet, and that's it. I live in Germany, and so far, I have never encountered any problems with contactless payment and any of my banking applications. Therefore, it works flawlessly as you would expect from any other Android phone. One of my least favorite parts of Chinese ColorOS is that you cannot use Google Discovery on your home screen and force to use their Quick Glance page. 
Moreover, this page is just filled with sponsored content and everything is in Chinese. Unfortunately, I don't have a way for you to install Google Discovery instead of this page, but I will show you how you can remove most of the Chinese stuff and make it a bit more useful. First, go to Settings, Home Screen and Lock Screen, swipe down on Home and set it to Notifications and Quick Settings. This will remove the annoying global search page when you pull down on the home page and make it open the quick settings as it should be. Now we can deal with the quick glance. Click on your profile icon on the top left of the screen, tap the gear icon on the top right to go to the settings. From the top down, enter Brino suggestions and disable it. Then get into customize layout and disable quick functions. Also disable recommended services and trending news to remove ads and sponsored content. Go to notifications and disable all of them. Now you should be left with an empty space that we can fill with widgets. My choices are weather, battery details, steps, connected devices and calendar. But you can choose whatever widget that you want as long as they are first party widgets. Unfortunately, you cannot put third party widgets here. But hey, you have to compromise somewhere. I admit I was one of the biggest critics of Circle to Search when it first announced, but nowadays I simply can't live without it. I really don't care about the search functionality, but being able to instantly translate any language without leaving the app or page is a huge time saver for me. Thus, Circle to Search was one of the things that I had to get working. Fortunately, I found a way. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to have long press the home button to activate this feature, but we'll get into that. First thing that you need to do is go to settings, AI, and disable every Brino AI feature. Don't worry, they already don't work in English, so you are not losing any kind of functionality. Now go to this link and install MeCTS. We will use this app to trigger circular search. Now you can download Google Assistant or Google Gemini from the Play Store if you don't have them installed on your phone. For this demonstration, I'll use Gemini. Open the Gemini app, click on your profile picture and go to the settings. From there, select screen contacts and this will bring you to a hidden settings page. In here, simply choose Google as your default assistant app. One important disclaimer though, when you reboot your device, you have to come to this page again, select a different assistant and then select Google again in order to reset it. Otherwise, when you reboot your device, circular search will not work. And now you're ready to use it. You can trigger circular search by pressing me CTS icon, but it is not that convenient. What you can do is use any gesture or key mapper app that you desire to set a shortcut for me CTS so that you can trigger it easily whenever you want. Or you can do what I did and simply add a quick setting style and trigger it that way. I found this to be the fastest and most reliable way. What about the Gemini itself? For this, you will need another app that is appropriately named Gemini Assistant Shortcuts. This is basically the same concept as MeCTS. When you open the app by clicking its icon, it triggers Google Gemini. As simple as that. Again, you can use any key mapper or gesture app to assign a shortcut for it, but I use the Edge panel for this since this app doesn't have a quick setting style. I just open the Edge panel and press Trigger Gemini button and boom, Gemini is opened. Arguably, one of the most frustrating parts of using a Chinese firmware device is getting late or no notifications at all. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a reliable way that will work 100% of the time, but if you follow the steps that I will give you in this section, I guarantee you, at least 95% of the time, you won't have any problems. And to be fair, 95% is still better than nothing. First thing we need to do is to activate developer options. For that, go to settings, about device, version, and press version number over and over again until the toast message says that the developer settings are activated. Now go back to settings, system and update, and you can find the developer options there. The setting that we are searching is called suspend execution for cached apps. Disable it. This basically prevents any app from running any background services unless they are actively being used. It's an extreme battery saving measure, but to be fair, I didn't realize any impact on my battery when it was disabled. And also, I would much rather get my notifications than to have 20 minutes more screen on time. Another extreme power saving feature that we need to turn off is sleep standby optimization. Go to settings, battery, power saving settings and turn off sleep standby optimization. Is that it? Of course not. 
After this, you have to do these steps for every single app that you want to get reliable notifications. So follow through. Go to that app settings by long pressing the app icon and selecting app info. Then click on battery usage and select allow background activity. Again, in the app info page at the bottom, disable manage app if unused. Then go to settings, apps, auto launch and find and turn on your app. Again, in settings, app, this time associated launch and do the same. Find your app and turn it on. Finally, even if you click allow notifications when you first launch an app, ColorOS doesn't actually activate notifications. So you have to again go to app info, this time manage notifications and be sure that lock screen is checked. If you want to see better notifications, also check that. Then turn on ring and vibration. I also suggest looking at the individual notification channels as well because ColorOS has a tendency to set them to silent by default as well. Now, hopefully you will reliably get your notifications from that app. Yes, it is pretty annoying to do all of these steps for every single app that you want to get a notification, but unfortunately I couldn't find a better way without rooting your device. And don't worry about the battery drain. I'm using my device like this for well over two months and I didn't even realize any difference on my battery life. What about those unwanted pre-installed apps? To be fair, ColorOS didn't come with a bunch of bloatware out of the box per se, but I will still show you a way to delete them or deactivate them without using root and ADB commands. All you need is an app called Kanta. Download and install it on your phone and with Kanta you can remove any unwanted apps. The app shows you which apps are system apps and is it safe to remove them or not. One benefit of using Kanta is that you're not actually removing the app. So if you make a mistake and remove an app that was important, you can simply revert back. Downside is you won't necessarily save space, but at least you won't see these apps again. And they will not be able to run in the background either. I have to give a disclaimer though. Even though it's generally safe to remove your apps using Kanta, you can still cause problems on your system. So be careful what you remove or be careful at least while you're removing something. Like I said, there wasn't any app that I wanted to remove that I couldn't remove normally. Thus, this step is up to you. Another pretty useful feature is Android Auto, which you may already know is not enabled on Chinese firmware. Don't be scared though, since it is already installed on your phone. All you have to do is go to settings, connection and sharing, smart cars, then press on the three dots and select more. From here, go to about smart cars and disable smart cars. This should force your phone to launch Android Auto whenever you are connected to your car's head units. Finally, I want to give you some small tips to improve your overall experience. I'm not a fan of lock screen magazines, so here's how you can disable it. Go to your settings, home screen and lock screen, lock screen magazine and disable it. I'm also not a fan of default calendar app, and especially it sending me spam notifications. I simply delete the colorless calendar, but if you want to use it, here's how you can remove those spam notifications. Open calendar app, Go to settings, displayed items and disable, subscription and service reminders, subscription recommendations and suggested events. You can also disable the rest if you don't want them to be displayed on your calendar. Another annoying app is App Market. Again, to remove spam notifications, open App Market, go to your profile and open settings. Then open notifications and disable the things that you don't want. And with that, our list is complete. Your phone should be ready to use and you don't have to deal with those small annoyances anymore. If you have your own tips, please share them in the comment section so everyone and I can learn from that. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. It helps massively. And as always, take care.